G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory, or more specifically, my kitchen, because it's my favorite place to record. I just like the light here. You've read the title, Are Hand Controllers for Losers? It's probably clickbait, but you're watching the video, so who's the idiot now? But we need to talk about hand controllers. As an astrophotographer, when anyone mentions an eyepiece, we are morally obligated to say smugly, what's an eyepiece? And that's the funniest thing in the world. But the same goes for hand controllers. When we mention hand controllers, there's always someone who says, what's a hand controller? Like some sort of smug Apple or Tesla owner. Because you do get to a point in your astrophotography, especially if you're in a permanent setup where you are controlling things with a computer and you don't need the hand controller anymore. Or do we? Let's dive into this question about hand controllers and have a little chat about the things I love and the things I hate about hand controllers. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. I know what you're thinking. Dylan, why the hell are you using a hand controller in the first place? I've got a permanent observatory set up here. And to be honest, I really don't use the, the hand controller at all much. Uh, this is connected via the PC port straight to the computer here, which controls the whole observatory. Remote control in, I turn everything on remotely, and then ASCOM takes over and I can control it all via the computer. So why do I have a hand controller connected at all? Every time. One thing I really love about all controllers, all hand controllers have an inbuilt polar alignment routine. And for some reason, they're not very well documented. I really do advise reading the manual to check up on how you do this, but essentially you run your two or three star alignment, and then you polar align on one star and it will just automatically show the error. And then you manually twiddle knobs until you have that polar alignment star back in the middle and you're polar aligned and it's really good. It's as good as a pole master or PHT, better than drift alignment, it's really fantastic. If I ever have to do a polar alignment routine or I want to hyper tune it or get it in a bit further, I just do it with the hand controller. So the Skywatcher hand controller is a SynScan and the Celestron is a Nexstar. And depending on your mount, really a lot of the brains happens in the hand controller. The Celestron one, I had to have this plugged in all the time, even though I'd plug the PC port to the PC and control it via a computer, it still contained a lot of the brains in here. I think that's different for more premium mounts though. A lot of the brains do actually happen in the mount, so you can get rid of the hand controller altogether if you want to. Now, whether you like the SynScan or the Nexstar is really personal preference. I mean, you'd be forgiven by looking at them for thinking they were maybe made in the same factory. The way they're set up and the way their menu systems work are pretty archaic. You kind of peck through menu options to get to the section you want, whether it's utility or target selection, and they're kind of clunky, especially by today's standards. I can see why a lot of manufacturers want to switch over to phone control, but still having that responsiveness on the buttons is something I like. Now this is my kids five inch Celestron SCT, uh, which comes on this cool little fork mount. Now this was designed to use with Wi-Fi, so you connect your phone to it, you can control it with Wi-Fi, but I always found that connection really sort of glitchy. It wasn't really touch sensitive, so I sprung for a hand controller. Now with a hand controller, it's very responsive. I can just click around really easily. It was worth the price. And in fact, if you don't want to spring for a Evolution series or Nexstar series, you can get one of these little Astrofires and just buy the controller. It's basically the same thing. Now let's talk about responsiveness. A couple of other little bugbears. You've noticed that I have some tape here because in the observatory, I don't like having any light shining on my equipment at all. So I cover up the little glow of this thing and uh, tape on the little other little lights around the observatory as well. But in terms of responsiveness, like you hit the button and it moves, that's pretty good. You can control the rate as well. So most of them will have a rate where you can set it to nine or one or something like that. Uh, this is set to top speed right now and you can see it's moving there okay but sometimes it doesn't and i don't think that's a problem with the mount i think that's a problem with the button on the hand controller so i could just replace this hand controller but i need to talk about these buttons specifically these sort of gummy little buttons they're kind of horrible i've always not really enjoyed them you can kind of tap them and you don't really get a sense for when it's touching. It could be just a more responsive clicky type button 
that has more of a tactile feedback. Sometimes I'm in here and I just want to skip around the moon. I want to reframe a target. If it's connected to a computer, I can do that on the computer, but it's a bit more fiddly. You know, I'm using the mouse to click the buttons and whatever. Or even if you're searching for a planet or something like that, which is not something you can do with plate solving, hand controller comes in handy. So I do like having it. So maybe I'm the loser. But you're probably thinking, is there a better way? And yes, there is. There are other industries that thrive on hand controllers, the gaming industry, and they know much better than we do about tactile feedback and designing a hand controller which actually works very well with your hand. And thanks to a cool little utility called ASCOM Pad, you can connect your mount to a game controller. And even though this is EQ Mod specific, it's not just for Skywatcher mounts, you can also do this with the Celestial mount as well, I've done it before. And it's actually quite handy, let me show you. Okay, now because I'm on a Skywatcher mount, I already have EQ mod set up and I can control the mount using these little buttons here, uh, which is very handy, but we want to connect it to the game controller. So you want to install this little utility, ASCOM pad, just Google it. You know how Google works, get the latest version, install that. Then you want to set up your mount, select the ASCOM driver, close out of this window, go to mount, connect, ask them to choose a dialogue again. Okay, once the mount's connected, you might want to change in the setup here, the slew rates, because they all default to like nothing basically. So you can set up a gradient of slew rates here. I've done them from one to five. And then if I hit these buttons, I can see the mount moving, which is a good start. So the next thing we need to do is set up the gamepad. If it's a USB gamepad, pretty standard, like an Xbox one, it's usually pretty straightforward. We can go in here and assign buttons. We can assign buttons for sidereal tracking or focusing in and out. I can even assign buttons for the dome control as well. I'm not gonna assign any of those because I don't wanna accidentally hit a game controller and then close my observatory or something like that. And you can do the calibration here. Start calibration will let you move your joysticks in the directions you want them to, to the extremes. So now, if this works, I can go out to the observatory and use the gamepad. All right, Space Invaders, take one. <laughs> it works. You know what, I might just leave this here in the observatory because that's actually really handy. You might, if you have a fast enough mount, you could probably use this for tracking the space station. I know Theory Legault does that as well and you should see his setup, it's pretty crazy. Obviously, if you get the drivers sorted out, you can use a Bluetooth one, so it doesn't even have to be wired. It's not really useful. It's a bit of a gimmick, but these things are cheap, cheaper than hand controllers anyway. And that's it really. There's not much more for me to say about hand controllers. Obviously, you do want to update your firmware now and then so that you have the latest version. Hand controllers, are you a loser for using them? I'll let your mother decide that. I leave mine plugged in, but I'm a self-confessed loser, so. Say what you want. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope your astronomy adventures are going well. I've got a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline, so stay tuned. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>